Okay, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to just uh, maybe introduce this session for the day. Uh, stop me and tell me where I need to get back on track if I'm off track. Um, but this is a, a sensitive topic. So, so maybe I should start with this. If you stop me in the middle of the street and say, Quibbers, what do you do for a living? My response to you would be, um, I challenge people's beliefs. So that's what I like to do. I really like to take people and challenge their thinking. Now, I don't just do it for fun. However, it is fun. And because I enjoy it so much, there's not a lot of people uh, loving me. Because, I mean, if I challenge your beliefs, that's your core. That's something that, that really uh, makes you understand and interact with the world in a specific way. And so what I like to do is I like to look at people's beliefs and just give it a little bit of a, a rattle and a shake uh, so that they can see a little bit of a bigger world, you know. Um, I often find that when we get stuck in life, and we don't get stuck because of, you know, or mostly we don't get stuck because of external factors. Often when we get stuck in life, it is just this mindset it's just a neural pathway that's been formed uh, and, and and now i'm stuck and i struggle to think outside of the proverbial box you know so so that's what i enjoy doing um and 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 what i want to do now as an introduction is to talk about beliefs i was just going to jump into people's beliefs because we can't talk about self-management unless we explore uh, what is the belief behind management, all right? So that's where I want to start. Um, now, don't kill the messenger. I'm going to throw things out that it might stir something and you might go like, I don't like what I'm hearing and this is against my religious beliefs and this is against my upbringing, whatever. Hey, I'm just sharing the information, all right? So this is just whoever's sharing information. But when we think about the way we view the world and, and how we operate within that world and then therefore how we run our businesses and manage our people, I do want to take you back to a person that really introduced the way we think about the world uh, currently, you know, or how we operate. And this person really introduced, you know, a, a very specific way of thinking. Now, I am sure that you all heard about this person. His name is, was, I guess was, Sir Isaac Newton. Sir Isaac Newton. I mean, you know Sir Isaac Newton, right? Uh, I mean, the whole theory of uh, he, he saw an apple fell from the tree and then he got excited about, um, what do you call it, gravitation, uh, you know, and the whole theory of gra gravitation. Um, and we even measure gravitation still in Newtons, by the way. So Isaac Newton, uh, a very influential person in his time. But what you need to understand about Isaac Newton, if you go and read his journals and look at his work, is he saw himself as a scientist, but he also saw himself as a theologian. In fact, he would talk about himself as half scientist, half theologian, you know, 50, 50 percent. Um, and the reason in his time, that was in the 1600s, uh, the reason why people start playing that role is, I mean, the church has this very dominant way of thinking and uh, that's been kind of driving the world, people's worlds for several years. And now science is emerging and people are really looking at science. And so all of a sudden what you find is you find people cry, trying to bring the science with the religion kind of uh, trying to figure out, well, this is what we believe, you know, like just the mystery around how it works. And we always just said, well, this is God, but now there's science. And now we're trying to understand God in the light of science. And we're trying to understand science in the light of God. And that is Sir Isaac Newton. But something else that you need to know about him, he was an absolute nutcase, this guy. In his journals, he would actually sit, wake up in the morning, and he will sit on his bed, and he will take a needle, and he will, he will ask himself, what will happen if I stick this needle in my eye? And then he will get a journal and a pen, and he will stick the needle in his eye to just write about the pain that he's experiencing stuff. Not case. But Sir Isaac Newton had a theological belief, and this was his belief. And his belief infiltrated and start dominating the way we manage people and run our businesses. His belief was that God created the world and that the world was good. But there was one problem. 
one big problem. Do you know what the problem was? Uh, you are the problem, according to Sir Isaac Newton. Because what he said is, he said, if God created the world and the world was good, why are you trying to change it? What is the matter with you? Well, you are currently sitting on a chair, but God didn't create the chair. Why are you so unhappy with creation that you said, you know, I'm unhappy, I'm going to create my own chair. And, and God never created a bed, but you as the, a human being, you are so unhappy with God's creation that you then decided that you're going to create your own bed and create communication systems and create electronics. God never created electronics and create transportation. And so what Sir Isaac Newton said, he said, people are unhappy with God's creation and so they are now trying to be the creator and we can't allow that we can't allow them trying to be god and so what we need to do is we really need to bring in people um we really need to kind of we can't let them go the world will be crazy if we just let people go we need to kind of control them so that they don't go crazy all right uh, and so what he did with his thinking was that there needs to be some sort of a system. We need to create some sort of a, a, a way to control people. And so the idea was, the, the theology of the day was then that there's God, and then there was uh, the Son, then there was the Holy Spirit, then we had to have people like popes, then we had to have archbishops and bishops, then we had priests, then we had fathers, then we had mothers, and then we had children. And if we have a line of authority, you know, that this is how the authority looks like, and, and obviously, you know, the, the Pope tells the Archbishop, and the Archbishop tells the Bishop, and, and they just need to respond to that line of authority, then we will be able to control people. Now, that is the world that we grew up in. That is the world that we see all around us. I mean, just think about going to the school. Principal, head of department, teachers, students, parents or parents, students. Uh, think about just going to church. You've got the, the pastor. Then you've got the church council. Then you have those people. They are at every bazaar. They're always the people baking the pancakes and stuff. There's all, and then you have the pew warmers. So this idea of a hierarchy or a structure is just part of our worldview. It's just how we operate. And every single company out there that I know, you know, that I engage with, they've got the CEO, they've got the directors, they've got the senior managers, the mid managers. It's just the way the world is. But the belief behind that thinking, behind that structure, is that we cannot trust people. Uh, we need to control them. If we're going to let them loose, the, the world will be chaos. And that is the belief that drives management. But how do we manage a person so that they don't go crazy and cause harm? But along came a guy, George Alfred Whitehead. Uh, and Whitehead suggests like, hey, I think there's a different uh, way. There's a, a different way of thinking about God and creation. He was like in the 1800s, I think. Yeah, and I think he actually came from a bit of a, a psychology background. Uh, yeah. I think so, a psychology and then business. And, and so, science. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, some interesting theories. Oh, yeah, very interesting theories. White did just go and Google him. And what, what White did said was the following. He said, God created the universe. And, uh, and, and uh, creation was good. Creation was perfect. But. God is not finished with creation. In fact, he created people in his image. And so therefore they are co-creators because if I, if my father is a creator and now I'm in his image, I will be a co-creator. And so instead of trying to control people, why don't we let them loose so that they can go and create, you know? Uh, and that was his thinking. And so instead of having a system to control, Let's create a system that will get the best out of people, that will bring their strengths to the table, that will bring uh, everything that they can offer to the table. Um, and so the, uh, in con uh, contrast with the Newtonian uh, worldview, the Whiteheadian worldview developed. And very few people over the years bought into this. We are one of those crazies that said, 
let's try, let's taste. Uh, we had many tears and, uh, and many, uh, I would say, great and awful experiences in researching white hedonism and how to apply it. But Tammy, are we the only crazy ones? No. <laughs> are we, we're not, not. I mean, are there more people that's thinking outside of the structure we need to control people? Yeah, absolutely. And actually, I think surprisingly more than what people think. And people who have gone in a very far down this road and people who've taken a few steps down this road. So, yeah. So, I would love to share with you um, some of those things. So, yeah, we'll just bring up the screen. Um, so, firstly, just in case anyone wants to do a bit of research, Newtonian worldview um, is the one worldview and then a white Hadian worldview from George Whitehead. Is yep. George or Alfred? Or uh, Alfred uh, George or George, uh, George Alfred. Alfred Whitehead. George Alfred Whitehead. Yeah. Okay. So you can go and have a look at them. So yeah, so I want to talk to you about some companies that are already embracing um, just understanding how we can let go of control um, in our companies. And you might be surprised. Some of these might not surprise you and some of them might surprise you. But the very first one um, is Netflix. And so I did a little bit of research on them and I, I heard about them first that they do things a bit differently and I um, also did some research on them. And so Netflix has a company policy for its people when it comes to spending money, when it comes to uh, make, making decisions or like going on leave, I think as well. And it's a very easy policy. You can remember it in your head. So it's very helpful to go to when you need to. Uh, it's five words and it says on their policy act in netflix's best interests and that's it absolutely <laughs> love it you know yeah. it's not like you have to get a purchase order and it doesn't it's just like act in the company's best interest that's the policy yeah i absolutely it sounds crazy but i absolutely it love it it sounds crazy but it works and look at how successful netflix is being with this policy in place yeah. and um i really encourage you to go you just google netflix policy act in the yeah. best interest you'll you'll find some articles where um the ceo just writes about it and talks about how in honoring or giving people this their freedom and the responsibility that comes along with it that's what you get back you wow. get the responsibility that you give in a sense so if you are putting a structure in place that limits responsibility that's what you're going to get and yep. if you're putting a, a freeing structure in place you're going to give more responsibility back mm -hmm. um, which is the surprising um, yeah. aspect but let me not stop at netflix obviously google is one of those companies that a lot of people follow and they are definitely uh, at the frontier of doing things differently a lot of things they do differently you shared with me 105 thousand people employed mm -hmm. over 50 countries they work in different time zones and listen to this they encourage non-business chit chat in meetings that, that's one of the policies mm -hmm. it's like hey if we're going to come together we just want to tell us about your weekend and it's the whole idea is to, to really build a sense of team and, and connecting with each other yeah. where mostly when we want to control the meeting it is like let's come in okay who's, who's the chairperson who's mm -hmm. this and these guys they they created sleeping pods for people. <laughs> that one of those. If you want to go and have a nap, then there's a sleeping pod for you. I hope they changed the bedding. I'm not exactly sure how that works. Yeah, yeah. so basically, um, one of the big differences between a Newtonian or a Whiteheadian, or you can put a lot of other words there, we could talk about a very traditional management hierarchical approach or a um, uh, I like to use a flatter approach or just a different worldview that you use with your people. In your Newtonian worldview, you are kind of treated more like a cog in a machine in your company. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just doing a job for us. If you don't like it, we'll get someone yeah. else to replace you. It's easy. Um, and what people shifting into a different way of where they're not in such a controlling way of trying to control their people, they start to see the fact that you're a person and yeah. there's maybe more that we could care about in terms of how we can get the best out of you. And maybe you need to sleep sometimes. Yeah. Maybe that's just the best for you in that moment. Yeah. Have enough, come back. And yeah. I mean, you're sleeping at your yeah. desk anyway, yeah. so just go and sleep comfortably somewhere yeah, else. Sleep comfortably, <laughs> get refreshed and come back and give us your best work afterwards and things like that. Yeah, so, yeah, I was thinking differently so oh, i mean if no one who's been around us were 
don't know about Semler, Ricardo Semler, or yeah. the Semco Style Institute, which there is a branch here in Stellenbosch, so you can definitely check them out here locally, but they're all over the world now. But Ricardo Semler, businessman in um, Brazil, yeah. and he inherited his father's company and made drastic changes. Yeah. And we're talking from the 70s, 80s, 90s, so mm. this is quite a while ago already. And, um, and obviously, coming through all of those changes, he's now... Um, started the Semco Style Institute to help other companies also embrace different ways of doing things. Um, you must definitely Google his yes. TED Talk and we'll send you the link to his TED Talk if you haven't seen it. Really, really thinking out of the box when it comes to how do I run my company. And, and like you say, that was 30 years ago already. Yeah. I mean, this, this is thinking outside of the box like most of us don't and this was 30 years ago already. Mm. Uh, but just a warning, uh, it, it's one of those TED Talks that make sure that you are okay to watch it because then it could really rattle your beliefs as to how we should run companies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, then this company that I wanted to mention is in the Netherlands. I'm going to probably say this wrong, but I'm going to go with my Afrikaans uh, approach. Beef yeah. I don't know. <laughs> um, it's obviously Dutch, but they are a home care nursing organization with over 7,000 employees with no bosses. So they run in these self-managed teams all around the Netherlands of about 10 to 12 nurses all together um, in one neighborhood. They kind of decide this is the neighborhood where we want to start a new team. The team gets put in place and the team gets to decide everything. They get to decide where their headquarters is going to be, what their uniform is going to be, how they're going to run their shifts, how they're going to divide up the clients, how they are going to manage their own budget, everything. So no manager, it's run as a self-managed team. It's a really interesting but organization. They, they do have approach. a CEO though. Yeah, so um, once again, with the structure in place, the big thing is that the CEO doesn't manage the teams. The teams make all the decisions that are relevant for themselves. However, there is a little support team, they call it. It's like a overall support team. And those are people whose function is purely to try to kind of harness the full yeah. width of what's going on in all of these tiny teams all over the place. I mean, 7,000 people in teams of 10, that's 700 teams. Yeah. So they're harnessing what's happening between all the 700 teams and kind of connecting the, the wisdom and the learning and um, mm. kind of thing like that. So a really cool. Just structure. one more thing that uh, when I look at Frederick Lelou, oh, if you haven't read the book yet, uh, Reinventing Organizations, yes. Reinventing Organizations, Frederick Lelou, go and get it. Um, but when I read his book, it was about 7,000 people. But then recently, I have done more research okay. because they are just functioning over Europe. They, and they've it taken is over the home thousands more. Yeah. Thousands more. Um, then what about Investec? I'm oh, sure you've heard the, about them. Last year, I think it was last year, June, Investec said, hey, I can't tell you that you need to take three days compassionate leave because your mother is dying. I mean, how ridiculous is that? Oh, sorry, I'm probably once again offending a lot of people. Uh, yeah, okay, I'm just going to stick with, <laughs> how ridiculous is that? I mean, if, if the person is sick, they're sick, and if you need to be there, uh, it, it, help, it doesn't help you to have you at the workplace, and you can't function anyway, but you, you're sitting there because you have to sit there. And so Investec changed their leave policy completely, where people can choose uh, the kind of leave they want and when they want to take it. So that was a big, a big move within South Africa. Yeah, no more applying for leave. You kind of yeah, you, you, I mean, there's a system as to when I want to go on leave, what do I need to do? Yeah. But is I'm not restricting you to five days sick and three days compassion and mm -hmm. 10 days for something else. They've really just let go of the, of the leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Um, this company in America, New Era Windows Cooperative, because I think a lot of people can see, they would say like maybe certain industries, maybe mm. you can do that in certain industries. But when it comes to like manufacturing or engineering and we've got safety concerns and things like that, it can't, you can't let people, but there must be control and things in place. Well, I'm going to share with you a couple of these companies that have done phenomenally well um, with just engaging in a different way with their people. There is a documentary that you can watch with Michael Moore all about this company, New Era Windows Cooperative. And it basically talks about how the company was, uh, they were gonna let all their people go and all their people obviously were very upset about this and staged a sit-in and out of that sit-in ended up coming together and buying the company themselves wow. and running it themselves. So um, yeah, really interesting story there. Morningstar, another American company. This company is 
all about tomato processing. If it's got anything to do with tomatoes and processing them into sauces or anything like that, delivering um, them, they do logistics all over America. They are actually involved for 40% of the industry, the tomato wow. industry in America. Ketchup. And this company does things radically differently. There is no, There are no employee contracts in this company. Wow. There are only contracts between like, like from between me and you if yeah. we're on a factory line or something like that and those get updated on a yearly basis but mm -hmm. there's no like boss to mm -hmm. employee kind of thing going on it's all partnership happening within that company Fabi, i'll just quickly share a great company you can read about this one in reinventing organizations as well it's a um what do they call it they make brass um foundry oh. uh, so they make parts specifically for cars um, and it's a, a really successful um, factory been going for years and, and um, got huge loyalty from their people um, who really give the best work. Um, if you get a job at their company, you know you're like you're in, you're not going to let that go. And uh, just, just pause. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, once again, it's one of those things where when you think factory and when you think precision work, you are producing a product that will be placed in cars. And uh, so immediately, my, my Newtonian worldview of like, you, I need to control these people. If I don't control them, then quality will suffer. So quality will suffer if there is not strict control over them. And I guess what these guys are proving is, no, you can maybe even increase your quality when you kind of come with another angle. That's actually someone I don't even have on the slide and I don't know why I don't, but Toyota. Oh, and the, Toyota, the, Jap yeah. the Japanese car industry started this in the 60s, actually, um, with a change. Yeah, so, yeah. so Honda Ballard, Honda yes. Ballard, uh, maybe before your time, but <laughs> but they had a, uh, definitely before your time, <laughs> yeah. but they had a, a, a advert series, uh, what do you call it, campaign, and it was called a zero defect, zero defect. So the whole idea, now this comes from the Japanese, which we perceive as like in control of everything. And Honda Ballard were one of the first automobile manufacturers that said, you know what, this control thing is really messing us up because the people at the bottom, they are looking up and they say, when are those idiots going to fix the problem? Can't they see what they are producing? And the people at the top are looking down and say, look at the quality that those idiots are producing down there. You know, fire them. Let's get some more people. And what Honda Ballard did with the zero defect campaigns, they said, we really need to distribute authority. We can't stay within this thinking that there's a boss and he's the boss, even if he doesn't know how to be the boss. We need to give uh, authority down even onto floor level where a cleaner, if the cleaner sees something is wrong with a car panel or something, can stop production and say, this frack factory produces zero defect and I do not, I will not allow that car to leave. Now, Toyota got onto this, and this is fascinating. In Toyota factories, they've got a cord. What do you call it? And, and, and on. A, and on cord. Yeah. And, and this cord, you get incentivized by pulling this cord. Now, this is crazy. Because if you, it doesn't matter what your job is, you have the authority. When you see that something is not correct, it's not the way that it should be, you just go and pull that cord and people will go like, okay, stop everything. The cleaner over there said something is not right. Let's fix it. And that's just ways where companies are distributing authority currently. And, and just the empowering effect of people knowing that I, I am so empowered that if I happen to make a mistake, someone, one of my colleagues will fix, will help me yes, fix it in yeah. a sense. So it's such a different culture that you're creating just through things like that. Uh, there's a conscious capitalism movement. You can definitely go and look into that. Definitely trying to do business in a different way. We use a system called Holacracy. Yeah. You can look into that as a self-management system as well. I wanted to talk about the John Lewis partnership. It's a kind of a collection of businesses, 370 different businesses, all based wow. in the UK with over 200,000 employees across all those businesses. And 100% employee owned businesses. Wow. So there are no bosses, there's no directors. The, the employees own their own business sure. and run it together. Um, Pixar does things differently. Yeah. Um, 
Patagonia is a retail company. Um, you know, they produce clothing and climbing gear and things like that. Definitely um, have a different approach and a very purpose-driven approach to their work as well. Um, this is a, I'm not even gonna try this one. This is a mental health hospital in Germany um, that does things differently. Sun Hydraulics, I put this, this company on here because they are international. They are operating, because a lot of people would say, can this work or in different cultures and things like that. Sun Hydraulics is a huge company that uh, also some kind of engineering, I don't know exactly what they do. I think hydraulics <laughs> um, and based in America, uh, the UK, um, China, India, all over the place, huge number of employees. Um, so we're talking a mega company that actually runs their whole business in a different model. Um, we've also got uh, things, there's a cab company, taxi company in America that um, is also purely owned by their workers. Um, yeah, so there's a whole lot more, but okay. I just wanted to start to put these things on the table. Okay, so what I hear you say is not that we are crazy no. for doing things differently is that there's a lot of craziness happening mm. and i assume that uh, these big names won't be as big uh, you know if it didn't work mm. so in other words it is maybe even safe to try something else a little bit so it's not as if it's going to be the end of the world <laughs> to let go a little bit and i think the big thing that as you study these companies and i really want to encourage you to go and study these companies just to see how they do are doing things differently what you will find is they rely more and more on people to manage themselves that it is not a person that needs to tell you this is how you need to do it this is by when you need to do it this is the quality that you need to do it uh you know that that kind of is taking they have people they have mentors they have people with a lot of wisdom and they have managers they have people guiding people but more and more what we find with these companies is they move towards self-management can you manage yourself i mean that's the big question i mean can you manage yourself uh, not, your company might not think so, but uh, do you have a house? Do, how did you manage to get that? I mean, are, are you eating tonight? How did you manage to do that? Are you driving a car? Uh, it seems like you can manage yourself. The only problem is our own companies don't think that we can. That someone needs to tell me how to go and buy a piece of soap. So I need to get a purchase order and all sorts of things to get a piece of soap. Uh, but at home, I don't. I can manage myself. Anyway, sorry, I get, I get sidetracked. Let's play a quick game. Uh, if you haven't done this before, uh, then uh, think 16, but for now we're gonna think nine. Take a piece of paper, and what I quickly want you to do is to draw, to draw these nine dots, all right? Quickly draw these nine dots. I'll give you the nine seconds. It's three by three. Three by three, three by three, all right? You've got your nine dots. Now, if you have done this exercise before, try 16. 16 will be four by four, yeah? yeah? 16. Just add an extra column in the right, yeah? yeah. Got it? Now, I'm going to give you a few seconds. Let's do this. I want you to connect all nine dots with four straight lines without picking up your hand. In other words, I can't go, uh, you know, connect the, a line through three, and then I pick up my hand, and I go through another three, and then I pick it up. All nine dots should be connected with four straight lines without lifting your hand and without going back on a line. So I can't, also can't go from dot, the dot at the top to the bottom one and then back and say, oh, that's just one line, all right. Connect all nine dots with four straight lines without lifting your hand and without going back on a line. I'm gonna give you a few seconds to do this and then I will check in with you, all right? Ready, steady, go. Have you ever done the 16 dots one before? Uh, oh, and don't cheat. I know some of you are going to Google this now. You're not allowed to cheat because I Googled the 16 dots. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> so, no, no Googling. Just do it. Just, just do this. All right. Um, I remember the first time mm. I went, I, I think I tried, I really tried. And then after a while, I was just like, yeah, stop this, you know, and I kind of just given up and i remember the rest of the people in my group they were all working at it. and i'm like guys really you know and then also uh, i think a big thing for me was there was a belief of can it even be done mm. you know so so that was a a big belief that i had so it can be done definitely oh it can be done should we give them a clue in fact 
this exercise is in the back of a magazine in the children's section all right so four five years old kids can do this all right so i'm just putting it out there yeah give them a clue please give them a clue well the clue is think triangles i think yeah so uh, it's most don't, likely don't, don't get sidetracked by the square think in triangles yeah most likely you are thinking in a square right in a little box trying to connect all the lines nah think triangles i think that will be a, a good clue yeah. And the other clue, actually, I just realized is a better clue. Think outside of the box. Think outside of the uh, box. <laughs> that is the other clue, is think outside of the box. How many lines? Oh, six lines for 16. Yeah. If, you're doing if that. you are doing the, six, the 16 one, that's six lines. Six lines to connect uh, 16 dots. If you have tried four, um, <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't have worked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to give you one line. Let's do one line, uh, Tammy. Can you give them one line? We can start anywhere, but we'll start at the top. This will be your first line. Now, I mean, a five-year-old can do this, so uh, you should really be able to do this now that you have this one line, okay? Okay, so we already have people that uh, kind of, they said, like, yeah, we, we can do this. <laughs> All right, shall we give them the second line? Yeah, just for the sake of, you know, electricity. And <laughs> this, this is, you know, we need to pay for the electricity and, and everything. So let's just let's spend the whole day on, on this five-year-old. Second line, uh, there you go. Uh, so you've got your first line. Now all of you will get it. Come on. I there's mean, only two more lines. There's okay. two more lines. Now you've got this, right? But by the way, while you are thinking about your last two lines, I do have a question, and that is, how do you feel currently? I mean, if you could think about how you, what the feeling is when you're kind of doing it, you know, uh, that, that's very important for this activity and where we're going to go with self-management. Maybe they could actually put something in the chat box that would be awesome yeah. to share with everyone. Just yeah. try if you, to share how you feel. Yeah, if you can get all of a, an emotion currently, what would that be? Like, if you, if you are struggling with this, what would you feel uh, at the moment? Just type it in the um, in the chat box. A bit stumped and frustrated. I love that. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm so gonna use those words just now. <laughs> Thanks, Esty. I have to say, I've done this with a lot of people, and a lot of people say they feel like an idiot. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, because yeah, yeah. some people are getting it, and you're just like trying and trying, and you just feel like I must really be stupid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Tammy. Third line. Third line, okay. This is really giving it away. Okay, now, come on, guys. You know where the last I'm line needs to go, go, right? The last line. There you go. All right, so that's connecting all nine dots with four straight lines without lifting your hand and without going back on uh, on the line. I'm just going to quickly show the 16 yes, solution show the for 16. anyone who needs yeah. it. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can do the 16. Yeah, yeah uh, this is one solution. Uh, this is one solution to do the 16. So if you quickly want to copy this and then uh, feel, uh, show other people that you are a genius, then uh, <laughs> but there are many ways to do the 16 one. Okay, so when I ask people to do the nine dots, uh, this is often how, what they describe. They, they describe that they are feeling, um, I think Essie said, frustrated. What was the other word there? Stumped, you know. This feeling of stumped and being frustrated. Uh, people talk about feeling stupid. People talk about feeling an idiot. Uh, I, often when I do this with people and I can see what they are doing, some people really just give up, you know. Mm -hmm. they, they try and they will just give up. Or Google. <laughs> or they will Google it, yeah. These days they just Google it. But this is what I want to, uh, I, I'm, I'm just going to touch on this, all right? We can spend a day on this activity and what it really means. But maybe I should ask you this. Maybe, maybe, maybe I should do this. Why would you struggle with an activity that a five-year-old can do? I mean, really? So I'm like, where are you stupid? <laughs> I'm sorry, can I say? <laughs> Well, now, now you're challenging people's beliefs. <laughs> I mean, really, why would a person struggle to do an activity that a five-year-old can do? Um, and and that, is, that is something that I really want to uh, put out there. Okay, I don't, can I, I just quickly, uh, your answer is that the audio is a bit scratchy. I just want to make sure that, is it on our side or on his side? 
if the audio is okay on your side, will you go to the reaction button and just give me a thumbs up? If it is not okay, then uh, something else. Okay. okay. Johan, it seems like it could be on your side. Just give me a smack of it. Okay, what's the beard? <laughs> All right. So why do we get stuck? If you get stuck uh, with this question, I want to congratulate you and say it's because you are a fantastic learner. You are such a good student. Because from the day, from, from before school, you were taught a very specific thinking pattern. And the thinking pattern is stay within the lines. Stay within the lines is what you have learned from the age of three, four. I mean, you draw your first picture, right? I mean, you knew what that was. Everybody was like, you said, oh, this is a beautiful house, you know, and everybody was like, no, it doesn't look like ours, but they were very nice to you, you know. But then your brother came along and said, that doesn't look like a house. You didn't even stay in the lines, you know. Look, the colors are all over the place. And then you went to primary school. And in primary school, in grade one or grade R, they, 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 they teach you how to write. And they will make little dots. And they will ask you to connect the dots. Uh, and then you went to um, the spur for your birthday. And the spur would give you a little picture with just a lot of numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then you had to connect all the, the numbers with each other. And then there would be like an Indian dude with a burger standing there. Uh, and so from a very early age, your brain has been programmed to connect the dots, connect the dots, connect the dots, connect the dots. Uh, and now I'm asking you to do a very silly uh, kiddies um, uh, activity. And you go, oh, I feel so stuck. I feel so frustrated. I feel so, man, I can't, you know, like, I, like, I feel like an idiot not being able to do this. Now, the truth is you're not an idiot. You are just a great student and you have learned to think within a very specific way of doing things. Now, we call that self-imposed boundaries. Uh, I never told you that you can't go past that first dot, you know, that bottom dot. But when you saw that first line, I think many of you went like, hmm, like, what, what is this? You know, he never said we can go past that line. I know, I never said you should stop at that dot. Uh, you impose some rules that you have learned throughout your life onto yourself. Uh, so you are sitting with these boundaries. Um, geez, should I tell my story? Yeah. No, okay, quick. I'm going to make this super Must be quick. Very okay. Short version. <laughs> short version. Um, bought a, a dishwasher. Uh, and someone tells me, you know, like, uh, but it's a very basic dishwasher. And, and someone says, hey, you need to take the soap, you know, that little block, that finished block with a little bolliki on. Uh, you must put it on top of the glasses. That's how this dishwasher works. Now, I'm not going to put it on top of the glasses. I know it should come into the door, all right? So you need to put the soap in the door. I mean, that, that is how I believe it worked. No, this person says, you don't understand uh, new technology. You take the soap and you put it on top of the glasses. That's how new technology dishwashers work. Anyway. I want to cause a fuss. I feel like a bit of an idiot not knowing how the new technology dishwashers work and that you actually don't put the soap in the door of the dishwasher, but that you put it on top of the glasses. And so I put it on top of the glasses. I switch on the dishwasher and I open it up later and everything is sparkling clean. Now I approach this person. And I'm like, hey, I don't want to like, I really didn't know that you put it on top of the glasses. Like, where did you learn this? And this is what she said. She said, everybody knows that that's how it works. Everybody knows. I'm like, oh, I didn't. Now I feel like such a loser because everybody knows that you do not, that old way of thinking is put soap in the, the dishwasher and the door and that little bucky, but you actually put it on top of the glass. Fast forward a couple of months. Uh, I am at the holiday house uh, standing there and um, this person's mother is packing the dishwasher, but this is an old, machine an old machine and she's packing the dishwasher and getting everything ready and i'm standing there making coffee and all of a sudden i see how she takes the soap and she puts it on top of the glass but everybody knows so i'm just kind of letting it be and then i but i'm like oh but this is such an old machine so this is not new technology and so it just got me for a second and i just said hey i just want to know um this is an old machine i know everybody knows where you put soap in a dishwasher but um 
uh, I thought this is this machine would be too old for that method. Where did you, you know, like how does it work with this machine? And this is what she said. She said, this machine is older than this friend of yours. Uh, and when uh, within the first couple of months when we bought this machine, the little bucky in the door broke. And so now we could have put the soap into this little bucky in the door and we started experimenting where else can you put soap. And we realized that if you put it on top of the glasses, it also worked. But this is vital, vital. Uh, because as she grew up, she grew up in an environment where it says this is the truth about how you do something and as soon as i grow up in that environment i start looking at boundaries which i then impose on myself I, nobody told me to do it this way this is just what i believe the truth is uh, about how the world works and then you teach to others and then you teach others you say this is how you do it this there's no other way this is it and you teach with so much conviction you know um, and so so this is vital thinking about self-management think about newtonian versus Whitehadian, because we grow up in a worldview which is very newtonian this is the way it is there is no other way but this is what i want to tell you that should you feel within the workplace frustrated uh, what did Esty say stumped sometimes if your workplace makes you feel uh you know maybe stuck or someone's like a bit of an idiot it's not you that's the problem it is these nine dots that's been passed on to you and said this is how we operate and your freedom to not feel that anymore so it's just outside of that nine dots but because you have created a belief that that's how the world works and nothing else uh, it often gives us feelings of frustration i want to just uh, move us along a little bit because time is running yeah. out so with that i th i guess what i guess we wanted to also share a little bit was our experience of breaking out of the nine dots within our yeah. company and our organization and how it was actually way more difficult than what we thought yeah. because of exactly this phenomenon or yeah. uh experience that we've just shared yeah. so i mean like for example we could share about how we told everyone that we're not going to have working hours anymore we said we don't mind you can come to the office anytime you want to if you feel like you want to work from home you can work from home if you want to go work in a coffee shop if you want to go work on a tropical island we don't care all we want to know is that the work is being done just want to know we can come work <laughs> yeah yeah and um and how fascinating it was i mean even personally myself yeah. how ingrained it was for me to say i have to start work at this time i have to finish work and if i haven't hit that those hours, then I haven't been working hard enough. So some people kind of start to struggle yeah. with a bit of guilt of like, I'm yeah. not working hard enough. And other people are completely also really trying to adapt in that situation. And they will find themselves sitting at a desk doing nothing. Yeah. And we will say, but what, are, what don't you want to go home? And like, no, 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 I'm just going to wait yeah. until five. Yeah. Well, for what? Yeah. <laughs> You've yeah. done all the work. <laughs> I mean, logically, we just looked at things and said, well, if the job is done, good and on time we don't care how it's getting done you know we don't care if you sit at home and get the job done i don't want to control you just get the job done if you want to work from eight at evening to three in the morning so that you can go and serve 10 o'clock with your friends the job gets done so who cares about the rest i'm not going to control you but <laughs> yeah exactly so I, I've, uh, people they would they would they would join and and then they go like yes this is fantastic Oh, you mean I can work anywhere? Yes. You mean I can work any hours? Yes. Oh, this is fantastic. Okay, uh, so what are you going to do now? No, I, I'm going to be here. <laughs> like, doing what? Uh, because there's no project on the table. No, no, I'm, I'm going to work. Work on what? There's no project to work on. No, no, but I, I, I'll stay in just before five. Just before five, then I'm going to leave. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and so it is, we've been grown out. We're in a worldview that you can't operate with freedom mm -hmm. uh, what we also find is you change a company 
Uh, and now you're what Hedian, and in what Hedian, people take authority and they take ownership and they take responsibility, but they're not used to that. Because, because having a choice about when and yeah. where I work suddenly means I have to be responsible. Oh, about the fact much that I'm more responsible. Yeah. You, yeah. You, need you, to, can, you can hear the difference. Yeah. And so now I'm waiting for the person to tell me what to do. <laughs> and I, I'm the person, I say, hey, do it to the best of your ability. Keep the company's interest at heart. Get the job done. No, but when should I start? You can start now. <laughs> well, I don't know. Well, you know, when should I finish? Like people do not have the ability. It's weird. At home, you can do this. At home, you make your own decisions. You want to plant a tree, you go and plant the tree. Uh, you have so much freedom in your own world. But as soon as people step into a, a business uh, and now they're back into this Newtonian top down. Now, someone needs to tell me, uh, I don't know what to do. Um, and so we know that the top down thing really steals people's creativity. It, 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 for me to get a promotion, I need to do exactly what the, the guy above me is doing. If I do something different, you know, I'll never get the promotion. So I just need to copy the people above me. So, I, you know, I just need to take on their problem solving skills. I need to take on their way of dealing with stuff if I want to climb the corporate ladder. But even if I tell you, you don't have to. You can be your own person. You can bring your whole self to, to the company. If you are used to that, you will still want to do things exactly like the person that's done it before you. And that's the problem. Yeah, I think that's one problem is that even if you do try to cause some changes in your company and try to do things differently, people tend to just fall back to what they know, old habits, old ways of doing things and keep stuck in that. But I think also um, there we might feel also in our companies that we can't do things differently ourselves because yeah. of the rules and the boundaries that are in place. And I think that also there's a there's something that when I've learned this stuff and I've told myself that this is how it is, maybe it's not actually. Maybe your company is not as controlling as what you think. Maybe they are. I'm not saying they're not. But I just want to, I guess, challenge you to also think um, a little bit outside the box in your own situation and don't feel like, don't put a box around yourself if there yeah. isn't one. Yeah. Feel it out. Yeah. Find out where is the box. Yeah. What are my boundaries within my position? How much control can I take mm. over my yeah. own work and bring in what I do in my personal time and my personal life and managing my family and managing my finances and managing my property, how much can I bring mm. actually to the workplace? Can I share one story? Yeah. So, so, this yeah. Is, so um, working with a big corporate client um, and, and a new team of people working there and there was a, a lady that joined that week. So she joined that week super excited about the, the position that she was in uh, and so excited that for her little team she decided that she wants to make shirts you know because they were a lot in public spaces uh, auctions and things and so she said that she wants to create a shirt you know for everybody to look the same and then she phoned the head office and head office said fill in this forms and you have to apply this and you have to do the red tape in this and this and this and she figured out that this will take her a couple of months to get the shirts the shirt done just to jump through all these hoops and she decided she said I just want to be sure it's going to cost me so much and it will make me so happy. And she bought it out of her own pocket. Now, uh, there I was sitting with, uh, with the CEO of the company and talking to him about how I enjoyed her, that she takes her own initiative. And immediately he was like, no, but she shouldn't do that. That's not the process. That's not the, you know, there's no control now. You know, that's not the process and she can't pay out of her own pocket. We will need to reimburse her. And I just told this guy, relax. I said, she made a decision look at the shirts if these shirts are disastrous for your company i mean if it's gonna sink the company then you know tell her to get rid of it and then let her jump to the process but i saw the shirts they're beautiful <laughs> they're stunning they're better looking than what you guys are now she paid for it just let it be and, and if i didn't tell this year he would have never even knew about it he would probably have seen someone wearing it and go like wow we produce nice shirts in this company <laughs> so what i'm saying is i just want to affirm what you're saying is sometimes uh, we <laughs> it sounds crazy what i'm saying but sometimes we need to push boundaries a little bit to see how much room can we play in you know yes this ways of doing things and yes but how much of the way we engage with our work we have actually created through our own nine dots and there is more room than we thought we have. 
Yeah, and, and our own nine dots is stifling our own creativity. Yeah. It's stifling our own responsibility and our own freedom, in a yeah. sense. We're taking so much of ourselves away from that. So, which brings us to the fact of what we actually wanted to share with you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because, I mean, uh, the last couple of months, we have been spending time on, well, I should say the last few years, really start looking into how companies work, how structures work. We look at the Netflix and the deep source and all these companies and compare them, you know, with actual data, like, oh, how are they different? And then we test it ourselves. And an accumulation of all this information led to a place where we said, we believe that people can feel way more productive, uh, way more engaged in their work. If we look at percentages of people being engaged, it is as low as 12% of people, I think 14% of people. 13% international 13 average. International average people feel engaged at their work. I just looked at research that the average person spends 26 minutes a day looking for other jobs. <laughs> it is crazy. That's yeah. the average worker in the office. And so with all of this information, we really decided that, hey, can we help people either to think outside of the box and also help with a, if I'm just used to a very Newtonian thing, that's all I know, well, maybe we can show you something else that could be helpful. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's really there to kind of take you on a journey of kind of looking at some of those, maybe the structure that you've got and kind of pushing it, questioning some of these boundaries and giving you kind of tools and skills, simple ways to just look at your job in a new way that can actually kind of bring more of your energy and your excitement and your passion back into what you're actually doing, finding a bit more meaning to it or um, also finding a little bit more autonomy about how you can um, even kind of step up in decisions or present pitches to people who are the decision makers and um, so a lot of communication kind of tips in there a lot of time management stuff um, but really like useful time management yeah. because I think that's one of the things as soon as we take structure away in terms of like hey no working hours and uh, you can work where you want suddenly um, I might actually realize that I need to kind of up my up yeah. my game when it comes to organizing my day or yeah. finding my own routine yeah. I know longer have to stick to the eight o'clock till 10 o'clock then it's my tea break and then it's an hour till lunch break and then whatever that routine is taken away from me but how do I develop a routine that works for me and helps me to be productive and feel like I'm really focused in my work and mm -hmm. then I've got my time to like go mm -hmm. away so like that's what I mean when I say like time management in terms of what can really work for yeah. you um, and then um, I'm just thinking about yeah. this, this whole part about prioritizing and where you can keep your focus and how to really when the job needs to get done, how to know what job needs to get done and get your focus going. Mm -hmm. uh, many years ago, um, I was complaining about how tired I was and, you know, like, oh, my word, life is so tough. And a friend of mine said, it's interesting that you guys choose a crisis management approach at work. And I'm like. We're not choosing a crisis management approach. There's a lot of crises in my work. And he said, no, 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 no. This is a management style. That the management style is you just allow the loudest voice to scream at you and then you have to run after that and I have to run after that. And that is a management style that you guys have chosen. And what we have learned looking at all of this is it is absolutely a style that there is sometimes of crises, but you can find yourself in a place where you just flow naturally, where, where things are just in place. And even if you have a boss shouting at you, even if the boss says this Netflix policy is junk, this is the 28 page policy list on how to buy a bar of soap, how you can even within that, become your own person and find purpose and find motivation and excitement. I mean, that is a lot of that went into this online yeah. training. Yeah, so we've got, this is just the first course of many. Um, at the moment, we have got a beta version. So um, let me just share a little bit more. Yeah, so at the moment, um, today, we're having a special offer and also you'll be for hearing you about guys. this. Yeah, for you guys <laughs> in the webinar. And also next week, we'll be sending out um, a bit of a promotion. We're looking for 20 people to join this training. 
uh, for half price. So we're going to be offering the training at $150 um, on our learning platform. Um, so we're looking for 20 people to go through the course and, and kind of experience it for us and give us some feedback so yeah. we can do those final tweaks. And then we'll be launching it in a, in a couple of weeks. You'll hear from us again as the, as the final version. It's a short course. It's just one month. Uh, you can get through it easily in one month, three yeah. to four weeks or so, if you spend about an hour a day on it. Um, and there's videos and there's a workbook. So you watch a video, you kind of work through the workbook to kind of figure out. And there's very practical tasks in terms of like setting up a time management system and yeah. um, things like that it's all asynchronous I think is the word um, yeah. so it means that you can do it in your own time there's no times that you have to join a group or anything like that just watch the video on your phone on your laptop um, all the rest and also what we're going to be bringing out we're very excited about this is let's say you feel you want yourself and your team maybe to go through this process to kind of have a rethink to kind of um, bring more energy back into what you guys are busy with. Um, <clears throat> this is an awesome um, uh, thing that we've added to it in terms of we want to give you a manual that you can use to actually have some group sessions with your team. So let's say everyone is doing their work for the week and on a Friday afternoon or something, whichever time suits you guys, you could get your whole team together and we will give you a manual to facilitate some group sessions where you can get some group discussions going around the content or the application of the content um, within your context and kind of help out your team dynamics to also yeah. bring out a bit of more of a culture shift within your team. Um, and things like that. So that's something else very exciting to come up. Yeah. So there's a few questions from you saying, can you send information? We will definitely send you the information. Mm -hmm. The beta form will uh, will be launched in a drip format. In other words, the first week, module one, with all the lessons will come active. The second week, module two, the third week, module four, and the fourth week, module uh, four, <laughs> three, week three, <laughs> module four, week four. Um, and so that's how we will present it. Um, and yes, it is a half price because the other half we want to get your feedback for, all right? Yeah. So for the other half we want to, to hear, was this useful, was it not? Uh, and, and can you see this actually being rolled out in the company where you do this with a, a team of people? Yeah. Anything else you want to add? Um, no, I think that was it. Is there any questions? Does anyone have questions? Um, we will send, um, we will definitely send information about this course. Uh, you will be hearing from us a lot in the next week as well about the course and you'll get more information, you'll get a bit of a sneak peek on it mm -hmm. um, as well. You can contact us here, but otherwise any questions from today's content maybe? There's yeah. just something that you feel sticking in your mind and you're still trying to process it. So. Yeah, we've got time. Uh, it's actually three o'clock, but I, if there are questions, then yeah, uh, I think uh, maybe yeah. ask people five questions. Maybe just a quick summary. The way you manage and go about your work uh, is form is 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 grounded in a very specific world view, and most of us sit with or or work within a company with a worldview that holds control as a big value. They will never say it. They will never put it on the wall that we love to control our people. But but that is a belief that we need to control. Uh, otherwise, people will mess up. But we what we want to tell you is when we look at the movers and shakers of this world, it's people that say that if we control, we are actually messing up. A better product, better quality work sits when we kind of let go of control. It sounds crazy because it's not the world that we live in. But I want to tell you through a lot of research that we have done, uh, it really shows us there's a lot of method in the madness to just treat people like people. But if we let go of control, people sit there and go like, mm, I've got no idea what to do now. And this is where the self-management course will help you to start thinking outside of the box and really engage in experience of work at a next level. It seems like there's no questions, Tammy. <laughs> That's awesome. If you do have questions, you can always get in touch yeah. with us. We're always happy to share more, especially around this topic. Okay, and we'll catch you guys in the next webinar. That's it. Have a fantastic day further. Bye.